why is it important to manage your, your reference data? So I think there's, there's essentially five main areas here and, and, and some of the stuff that you want to, that like ways that you want to interact with. So the first one is, is data quality and data integrity. So at its core, you know, you just want to make sure that if I'm, if, if, if I'm creating something that has a, you know, an address and that address has a, has a state in it, you know, that state needs to be a valid state. Okay. So, and, and sometimes, sometimes your database or your application will enforce that integrity, right? And, and it becomes less of a, of a, of an externally, an external management issue from a, from a day-to-day -day data entry issue um, because there's database, there's sort of application integrity on those, on those rules. Um, but not always. I mean, state's a pretty good example. It's not hard to get bad sort of address information in there. Uh, but you want to be able to, to understand the reference data, the, the, the lookup values for things like states, um, to protect against bad data, and then to maintain re referential integrity. Um, between, and what I mean by that is that, um, you know, if, you, if someone's put a state code in there and it doesn't, it doesn't, you might not have a description show up because it's not gonna actually going to match to the correct state code. Uh, so th that first thing is important. It's sort of less of a of a of a of a need because again, it tends to be managed pretty well by the applications. The second one, and probably the most, well, we can argue about this between the the, the reporting analytics and data integration. But one of the most um, difficult way things to manage reference data is in reporting and analytics. So. Let's say that you have a report that is, um, you know, counting the number of registered students uh, at any given point in time. That count of registered students is looking at using registration statuses to, um, to, to do that count. And you have a set of registration statuses in your system uh, that might be new, add, drop, withdraw, cancel, and um, uh, well, let's just stick with that. And new, and if you wrote a report, you know, saying that, you know, I want to count the number of people that are registered in this term, blah, 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 you know, with status equal new or add, okay, then that's the way you're counting it. So what happens if someone, if, if someone either creates a new status or they, uh, that's called, um, batch add or batch reg or something, you know, something because there's this new process where they're registering and they want to, they want to track that separately, but you've hard coded your report to use those statuses. Okay. Um, well, your report's going to break, you know, the way you count people, the way you do your population selection, that's the other thing. People create new values or there's bad values that get loaded in and people are falling off reports. They're falling off population selections. Uh, it, it's just, it's just not working. So reporting analytics, it's very important to understand that both from it being able to work, but also so you understand what, what these things are when you get these informations back or these populations that they, they work. Um, data integration. So we have a whole practice in our company focused on data integration and not insignificant amount of that, of, those, of each one of those integration uh, implementations that we do involve dealing with mapping of reference data values. So, you know, you have multiple systems at your campus and, and you know, to, today schools have at least 10 to 20 major systems that they're dealing with on their campus and it's growing every day so if you're moving information from your crm into your sis or from your lms into your sis or from your lms into a retention system or or a or from your sis into a scheduling system or or, or whatever right or, or everything into a data warehouse that then also goes into a, um, uh, some sort of uh, analytics process that in those each one of those moves each one of those etls or those apis or those integrations uh, you, you have to understand how to map between their status values and the code values. So, you know, in, in CRMs, you, you might have your a program set up with a very, um, you know, human facing, uh, description for, um, for an applicant, right. Or maybe a broader description for interest or, or potential programs. And then when you go load that into your student information system, you want to map that into more specific, program codes. Um, so understanding those are very important. And then you have, even, so you, that's not a one-time operation. Once you've set that up, now someone's going to go add a code in, you know, for a new program 
or change a code for a program or delete a code for a program in the SIS. Um, or they want, they don't, they, they feel that the way that it's, people are not understanding the way it's described in the LMS, they want to change that. So those changes on those two sides um, also require a change to your integration. And so how do you trigger the process or how do people know that they have to update these, these, these things or, or, that, or how do you control at least the, the update of those codes uh, to keep people from, um, um, from going rogue and then, and then breaking, breaking the system? Because sometimes, depending on how integrations are built, like that might not be caught. Like it, you, you might just have things that are sort of falling through the cracks, which is the worst sort of, sort of issue. Um, the next big thing is standards. So, you know, to make our life easier, it would be much better if, if when you were setting up, let's say you purchase Slate and you're setting that up as your CRM and you've got Banner um, and you're going to define all of the code values within Slate for things like uh, programs or applic application statuses or, or whatever, um, ideally you want to use the same codes. Right? You want to have the same values between this so that you have standards across your institution. Um, so in order to do that, in order to, to you know, empower the person who's setting up Slate <laughs> to use the same value that they have in Banner, you need to have some central repository that explains what those standards are, right? Or else what you're going to end up doing is someone, you know, going to Banner and clicking the drop down and trying to put that in or asking the IT office to produce a report of those values. Right, but it'd be much better if, if there was a general place where you talked about what's the master list of these code values and how do we want, you know, do we want them to be the same in these systems or at least do we want to be able to map them together. So having consistent values between the systems sim helps to simplify that and just generate those standards and makes um, reporting easier, but also just like, like you don't have to say, well, because I'm counting the students out of, you know, like this particular report out of my LMS, talks about the, you know, active students, and this other one talks about registered students, and those are the same thing, right? So that if you keep those codes uh, correct. Um, you know, lastly is, this, is the concept of the inventory. So if you are dealing with lists of things, like your list of catalog values or your, your GL numbers um, or, or other examples, uh, just being able to, to control those items and the hierarchies uh, between them with, uh, with some sort of governance uh, so most systems, you know, might, might go in and allow people to make those changes to those things. Uh, and, and the applications themselves may or may not have sort of approval steps in there. But if you can create a governance, you know, like a, a business process step that may not be enforced by that particular application that says, hey, if you're going to add a new GL number, you know, let's, let's, let's take a governance process on this first. You know, let's get that approved before you put it in the system. Or have something that says if I'm going to put it in, if I see it, if something in the system is different, then I, that can get caught. So those are those are the sort of the, the importance, the main areas uh, where reference data sort of impacts these um, your your day to day operations. Um, so what um, the impact uh, from from this, and I, and I talked about some of this before, is that you know unmanaged reference data tends to break things, all right? So if you, if people are just willy-nilly adding codes or changing codes in the system, or if they're doing, you know, loading data or creating data that doesn't follow the standards for the, for the values, you know, you'll get application processing that will break, possibly, either, you know, integration that will fail or bad data that will cause, um, you know, processes to break. That's the most, you know, extreme situation. Again, I mentioned your reporting and analytics can can stop working or at least appear to you know not work correctly. Uh, your data integrations can fail. Business processes can you know can can struggle without having the standards and the correct uh, data. Just understanding what we're supposed to do from a processing standpoint, and then having this issues with your inventory. So those you know they're not managing the process can 